Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the Spitfire Mark 9 low flying clip wing and full wing version. We're doing a modernized video for the cockpit familiarization. So for the cockpit, we're going to split it into three sections. The left side, we're going to call this the left console, it's not the correct word, but left side, left wall maybe. And then we've got the front flight instruments panel with gun sight. And then we've got the right side or the right console. So let's start on the left side. So first of all, by the left and lower part of the seat on the wall, we've got three covers here, ping, ping, ping. And they allow us access to be able to test the radiator, test supercharger, and we've got the ability to, for oil dilution here. Close them up. Here we have the rudder trim, especially important to set correctly for takeoff. Usually you would not turn the knob like this. You would actually set a, uh, whoops, a button on your HOTAS to go and do that. Next we have the radiator flaps here, naturally they are on, you can turn them off. Now as far as we understand, as long as you've got it turned on, the actual operation of these flaps is going to be automatic. Next, pedo heat, on or off. Next, if I can get them down here, fuel pump, on or off. Next is the trim for the pitch, elevator, and again, you're probably going to have that bound something on your HOTAS. Next is a filter that we can, I don't know if this is modelled, but a filter that we can add in for the carb. So for instance, if we're on the ground, then we may want the, the air filter. We've then got an air filter to stop dust and, and stuff getting into the engine. And then if we're going to take off and we're clear of the um, any you know FOD in the air, then we can turn the air filter off or set it for normal flight, I guess I should say. Next, we've got the throttle quadrant. We have the ability to throttle up and down with this guy here. Again, usually you're gonna bind that to your HOTAS. We've got a button on the end here for dropping bombs. Ping, 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 ping. We've got prop RPM control here. And if I were to unlatch here, we can see the RPM here in uh, hundreds. If we were to pause and go full throttle, Full RPM, you can see around 3,000 RPM there. We'll pull that back. Different RPMs are going to be more efficient for different regimes of flight. While we've got the throttle up, we've also got this guy here. It's the indicator light for the undercarriage. Throttle back down. Next, we've got essentially a two position switch mixture control. We can have it idle cutoff or we can have it in a normal run operation. Next is the radio. It's uh, kind of standard for the time for preset radio channels to be set in the mission editor. So we're going to be off, channel A, B, C, D. Uh, we can change the light intensity, night or day mode, master mode, transmit or receive or remote for the pilot. And we can lock out the remote possibility with this guy here. We've got a full video tutorial just on the radio in this thing if you want to go Watch that, that's the left side. Let's move on to the front instrument panel. So starting at the top left, we've got our nav lights off and on. We've got our flaps, which can be up or down, obviously. Uh, I suppose I can do that now. Uh, we've got oxygen. Here's our total supply of oxygen quantity. And here is our equivalent pressure in thousands of feet. And we've got a supply knob here. Ping. Ping. Down here, chronometer, aviation watch, and we have the ability to, down here, wind and adjust the clock. Magnetos, one and two, we can have each of them on or off. Hydraulic and pneumatic systems, a little hard to see, but if I pump the brakes, you see there. Left brake system, times 10, uh, sorry, left brake system, hydraulic pressure, times 10 PSI, so up to 130 PSI, this up to 130. 30 PSI and then we've got the, uh, the pneumatic supply here and PSI up to 600 and you can see um, we reduce pneumatic slightly when we use the brakes uh, for the hydraulics. Trim uh, indicator here uh, so if I were to trim uh, elevation I should say if I were to change my elevator trim you can see I can set it as required and I can set it to uh, neutral there. Gear, I'm not going to do on the ground, but it's showing that it's down. It would obviously show that it's up, and we have a night filter, which is pretty cool. Ping, if it was night time. 
we've got our main, if you like, IFR flight instruments here. Uh, we'll start here with the Speedo. That's IAS miles per hour times 10, all the way up to 480 miles an hour. Although you'd struggle to get that even in a dive. Next, we've got our barometric altimeter, and this is a really interesting one. It's a three needle altimeter, long needle, hundreds of feet, medium needle, thousands of feet, tiny little stub needle, tens of thousands of feet. And of course, we can adjust the barometric pressure, which you can see in that little sub gauge there. Next flight instrument, we've got the artificial horizon. We could also call it the attitude indicator. This represents us there with our wings there. The horizon is shown by this there, that line there. I don't know why it's such a strange angle, probably because I've got it paused and the plane was rocking about. We've also got a roll indicator, which is locked in a weird position at the moment. Again, probably because, because it's paused. So no roll, 30 degrees roll, 60 degrees roll, 90 degrees roll, and the same up there. If we go into a cloud or something, we lose our situational awareness. This is the one that's going to save us in conjunction with the others. Next, what looks firstly to be a E2B magnetic compass is actually not. It's a directional gyro. And we can adjust it here to match our magnetic or whatever we want to do with it. Up and right, VSI, vertical speed indicator, whether we're rising or climbing or descending, in thousands of feet per minute. Next, we've got uh, a twin gauge. We've got side slip indicator here, extremely important to fly uh, coordinated with your rudder in the center. We've got side slip left, side slip right in degrees. We've got also not a turn indicator. So I don't know why it says turn, but this is actually a bank angle indicator. So we've got 20 degrees, 40 degrees. So if you like complementing this guy up here below, IFR panel, then we've got uh, left um, uh, interior lights here, uh, starboard right interior lights here. Next we have a button cover and we can open that up for the starter and another one and we can open that up to get the booster coil. Ping. Up we've got a voltmeter for the electrical system in volts and that is of course direct current. RPM of the engine main crankshaft output, which is in hundreds of RPMs, and it's going to be up to around about uh, 3,000 RPM unless we uh, over rev. Next, supercharger control and warning. We have our main control here, up MS mode switch that is essentially going to force the supercharger into first gear, which is, for instance is going to be used for takeoff or we can have it down here into automatic normal operation. We have a light here, which is going to warn us when the supercharger is in second gear. It's a geared supercharger, obviously. Engine, uh, manifold pressure here, uh, or boost, and it's going to be measured in PSI. Engine, oil pressure in PSI. Next, oil radiator temperature in Celsius. Water radiator temperature in Celsius. Next is our fuel gauge, and imagine in front of us we've got the fuel tanks. We've got a small one and a slightly larger one beneath. This only measures the lower one. So energize, we press that for it to actually work. And the this top gauge here is showing the level of the lower tank while on the ground, and this one here uh, on the lower one while in flight. If the fuel pressure gets below a certain point, then this light will come on here and give us a warning. Heading down, obviously we've got Rider pedals here, and uh, don't have tow brakes. Instead, for brakes, we have a single brake lever, which is this guy here, which can be set on an analog. We can push it manually like that, that or I've set it to just my right uh, tow brake axis. I'm going to stick here, and the various buttons on it are going to be um, bound to your hotas. Next, we've got a compass here, and this is incredibly difficult to see. It, you know, maybe it'd be easy with VR, but you can see it's our compass. And we have a turnable setter ring there, course ring there. That, I've got a main uh, tank um, uh, uh, valve here. We've got a manual primer here for the engine to, for a startup procedure to use it. We would rotate it, pull it, lock it again. And finally, um, pressurization of the tank here. In standard configuration, it's off. We would turn it on if we needed to, and we would only do that, I believe, if we got the fuel pressure warning light on. Onto the right wall, we start with a wobble pump. You just pump this thing with your little chicken arms here to 
That's pressurizing fuel system startup. We've got lots of IFF here. First of all, our light emitter IFF, which is going to consist of this guy here, downward lamp mode, upward lamp mode, which have three configurations, which RC will take us through in a minute. Uh, they're a little bit hard to click on. And I can flash them with my Morse. Flash, 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 flash. Do you want to talk about the uh, uh, the lamp configurations, RC? All right, so the lamp switches on top control your lamp on the exterior of the plane, on the upper and the lower sides. Um, when the lower switch is forward and the upper switch is aft, your lighters, lights are steady. When the switches are in the middle, your lights are off. And when the lower switch is in the aft position and the upper switch is in the forward position, your light flashes when your more switches. Very good. Ping, ping, ping. Next landing gear, up or down, obviously, and we've got a handle there. Uh, underneath that, we've got uh, our DI sight, our windscreen DI sight, off and on. Above that, we've got some cool stuff. None of this is modelled, but it's quite cool. Uh, if we want to destroy our IFF button 1 and IFF button 2, and related to that, we have IFF circuits B and D, not modelled as far as we're aware. External tanks, fuel tanks, um, engaged. Non-engaged jettison. Uh, emergency pneumatic gear down, gear release, whatever you want to call it here, one use only. Ping! I get, we assume it's that bottle there that's pressurised. Okay, back up to the top, gun sight. Uh, so, gun sight on and off. Gun sight brightness. Actual gun sight there. Uh, filter. Ping. Actually quite useful. Ping. And configuration for ranging. We've got ranging set here in hundreds of yards. Click and drag or mouse scroll wheel. And a base, which is essentially going to be the wingspan of the aircraft you're firing at. So a bomber with 80 foot wingspan there uh, to set our optics. And um, that's it for that. Up here we can kind of be back, kind of be forward, kind of be release. Uh, mirror there, which is configurable. I think that's everything. That's a Spitfire Mark 9 low flying clip and non-clip. I hope that's useful and see you later.